Hey guys, Chris here and welcome back to the Amazon Vlogs. Are you looking to be an Amazon driver and wondering what you're gonna be driving? Or maybe you wanna know what the inside of an Amazon van looks like. Now you might have heard in the news that Amazon's gonna get all these electric vehicles from a company called Rivian. Right now they're testing it in a few states, just see how it works. And I would say in the next couple of years, um, they're gonna roll out to all the other states. So in the meantime, we're probably still gonna be using gas. Now there are a couple of different brands you might be starting with when you first start driving for Amazon. It really depends on what your DSP has. Sometimes it's a Mercedes Sprinter, other times the unmarked Ford van. And this one behind me is the Ram 3500 Pro Master. Like I said, nine times out of 10, you're probably gonna be driving one of these cargo vans. Reason being is you don't really need any special type of license. It's kind of like driving a minivan, you know, bigger than your usual SUV or sedan, but pretty much the same thing. And with all that being said, let's take a look inside. First, we're gonna take a look at the driver's seat. The seats are made of some sort of material that I really do like. On the left side is the handbrake. You pull it up when you're on a hill, down a hill, parking on a hill. I'm pretty sure you guys know how handbrakes work. Here's the seatbelt, it's orange, nice touch. To move the seat forward or backwards, all you gotta do is lift a little latch right here. Just lift it up and pull it up or pull it back. And if you wanna lean back or sit straight up, all you gotta do is turn this little knob on the left, right side, depending on how you look at it, and you just twist. Going that way brings it back, and then going, pulling it towards me brings it closer. The dashboard is probably what you guys wanna see the most. So we're gonna start it up, and this is what we're looking like. Turn the music down, and see, those are the lights. Got, <laughs> we gotta check the tire pressure, seatbelt. We'll check that later. This is the volume up and down, mute, speaker. You can see here, this is my um, phone, or this is my scanner, and I'm on break right now. As a little metal thing, I'm not metal thing, but like magnet ties. You can stick it like right here every time you do a stop. Here's the radio, and probably what all you guys have been wondering is it does have Bluetooth. So you can connect your phone here, and if you want to listen to music, wherever you want, podcasts, music. I use it sometimes. Sometimes I like to listen to a radio, you know. Right here's the shifter. I think the shifter's in a very, very convenient spot. Feels like I'm driving a race car and it also has a manual mode for all my car enthusiasts. It's fake, but it's still fun. And here are the air controls. This is a, to bring the air higher, lower, if you want cold or hot, and then all this stuff. The front, your legs, both and your defrosters, whatever. It also comes with USB and um, 12 volt. So if you need to charge your phone, got you. Got the cup holders right here. There's three of them. This is my big water cup. Always have it with me. Stay hydrated. Here's my badge. And here's the driver daily checklist. I think this is kind of old because we don't use the Mentor app anymore because we have these AI cameras. Yeah, so these cameras have AI in them. It's kind of crazy. Anytime you're looking at your phone, it's gonna send um, your boss uh, like a 20 second clip of you using your phone. Anytime you're distracted, anytime you get close to um, other drivers, anytime you're speeding. So you gotta be careful of this bad boy. And above that is the reverse camera, reverse camera. This also has a reverse camera, but this one is a bigger one. You can see the screen is a lot bigger than that. Anytime you need to reverse, just check one or the other. All right, and this is what the back looks like. You know, there's probably like 10 feet of room. Here are the shelves. This one's rated 150 pounds, so don't even think about sitting on that or gonna break it. But if you're less than 200 pounds, feel free to uh, lie down <laughs> if you're feeling a little tired. The packages here at Amazon, you don't really have to worry about the pounds. I'm pretty sure you can put as many totes as you want. Packages here at Amazon are very light. The shelves also do go up and down. As you can see, you can just lift it up and it holds itself usually. I say usually because anytime you make a turn that's a little too fast, but not that fast, shelves are gonna fall back down. Cause they're, I don't know what they're held by, but they're really weak. So like, if you just like push it, it falls straight down. And there's really no way you can lock it. I've seen people um, attach bungee cords from here and put it here, but obviously this truck or this fan has no bungee cords that I can see of. Here are all the totes, today's the end of the day, and yeah, 
I just, we're gonna bring these back to the station. Right now I'm just on lunch. I just finished and I always eat lunch at the end of the day. You guys know me. And this shelf isn't really used as much. Just cause how much volume we get, there's really no use for it. It makes the space more unusable. And then here we have some metal stuff. I don't know what this is. There's a shovel, I guess, to shove out snow. And then we get two LED lights. These LED lights are motion censored. So every time you come to the back, they turn on. Obviously they're on because I'm in the back. Here against the wall by the driver's seat. I think this is some sort of hand truck. Um, I tried using it, putting totes on it, and it just does not work. I despise this. Every time I think about using it, I always regret it. Maybe you'll find success with it, but for me, I just stay away. And here's the sliding door. If you're going less than 35 miles per hour in a residential zone, you're allowed to keep these open throughout the day. I know it looks weird from the outside and people are like, oh, your door's open. But in the training video, it says, yep, and to open it, it's just a little latch. You just pull that and then it locks in place. I think the only way to close it is from pulling it from the outside and lifting it like that. Because otherwise you can't pull it you can't lift this, so it, it's very it's slightly inconvenient, but you know, you do what you gotta do. All right, here's the back of the van. This door, just it's a latch, just open it. This door always opens first, and here's the latch for this one. So you just lift it like that, and they open. And these doors can open all the way, so it looks like this, which is very nice. You really only open that in the station when um, you're loading up your truck. I keep saying truck, I meant van. And this is what the trunk is looking like. And to open it from the outside, it's just a latch, just lift it. That's it. This is POV of what it looks like to drive the step van, or not a step van, just a regular van. You're more elevated from the floor. Engine in this thing is really very zippy, I would say. And that's a good thing and a bad thing because Zippy, it's more fun to drive and it's like, I don't know, it's, it's like it, it accelerates really well. But on the bad side, since there's AI cameras and stuff, tracks all that driving you do. On your report card, it sucks. You get like a report card saying how good your driving is and the camera is always watching you. <laughs> Actually, I don't think it's a live feed. It's like um, anytime an accident happens, they can go back and rewatch your whole day. Now we're gonna be reviewing the Ford Transit 250. Sometimes it's marked as an Amazon van, but in this case, it's a white unbranded van. Sometimes you're gonna be driving a white van. Now there are a few reasons why you might be driving one. The first reason is it's a new van and it has been branded to the Amazon Blue. Or number two is Christmas time and there's more packages that have to go out more than usual. And thus you need more trucks for those packages. So yeah, let's take a quick look inside of the white truck and see what it has to offer. As you can see, this is a Ford truck and this is the official booklet that comes with the truck. It's a 2020 Transit. So right now we're looking at the dashboard. This is what it looks like. This is going to be your workspace for 8 to 10 hours. On top of the dashboard, you can see that there's the USB outlet and um, <clears throat> the cigarette thing right here. Unique dashboard, I guess you can say. All right, so let's start it up. This is what it looks like when you start it up. Pretty simple stuff. You got your accelerometer and you got the mid looking thing, which has a menu. Right now we're at the driver assist. I haven't used it yet. You have Bluetooth settings. You also got your buttons here to change the music. Go back, volume up, volume down. Here's the radio. The radio is very important. <clears throat> I know what all you guys are thinking right now. Does it have Bluetooth? And to that, I say, yes, it does. If you want to listen to the radio, you have the radio stations right here. You can um, save your favorite radio station. Down here is the air conditioning. I don't really like this design. You can see it's the head if you want your feet. Turn it on. In the middle again, 12 volt USB. And we got two, three cup holders. Two and a half. Uh, they're kind of small. It's all right. Thing about the transit, I just want to say that the center console where it's right here is very small. As you can see, every time I go in and out of the truck, my foot doesn't even fit sideways. So, uh, so it, I'm always like jamming my foot here in the middle, trying to get to the back. 
So when I'm coming in, I got the hand rest in my way, I got the handbrake in my way, small center console. I gotta watch my face, make sure I don't hit my head on the shelf, and just kind of like trying to scooch in. What the back looks like, um, I'm not sure if you guys gonna have shelves or not. This one doesn't have shelves. Sliding doors, I really like the sliding doors compared to the RAM. As you can see, it's like a whole switch. You can just pull it like that, very simple. And if you want to close it, all you got to do is lift it back down and shut it. And in the back is the same case. There's a little latch you can just pop open. And then that. There you go. Another thing about the van is that they have windows in the back. So as you can see, back windows, side windows. Don't get me wrong. Like, it's bright back here. But when you have to use the bathroom, there's nowhere to go. You... It's a little sketch, you know? The lights aren't really that good. We have one bulb right here, two bulbs. Back here, three and four. So if you're trying to deliver at night, you better deliver as much as you can in the morning because it's gonna get pitch black back here. And yeah, that's pretty much the end of the van tour. Um, I'm six foot, so if you're worried about hitting your head, I, I barely just like fit. You really have to go out of your way to hit your head, which I could, but usually like when I'm stepping down, I'm always like a little, an inch or two lower. But I have hit my head in the back, so you just gotta be just a little careful. So I hope you guys enjoyed. Um, for all the new drivers, just stay safe, be alert. If you found this video helpful, make sure you give me a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. All right, peace.